everyone. We're here with Eric Pearson from Pearson Smith Realty. Uh, they're one of the fastest growing brokerages in the country right now. Uh, they went from 15 agents to uh, 657 agents in about three years, uh, which is a pretty astounding. And we're here to talk about lead generation with Eric, who is the uh, president and founder of uh, Pearson Smith. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Doing great, man. I appreciate you having me on and look forward to hopefully sharing some valuable information. So, by the way, you're a little off, man. We hit 700 agents this week. So, Wow, congratulations. Yeah, well, That's amazing. We're, we're it was, yeah, literally the email, the email that, you know, that, that, that we were talking about during this interview was, I mean, less than a week ago, like a week and a half ago, something yeah. like that. But we, we have a similar problem with our company in that we have a lot of overseas employees. We have employees around the country. So the official number is sort of floating. Right, right, right. <laughs> kind of changing. But that's huge, man. Congratulations. Yeah, appreciate um, it. It's been a lot of fun. Sweet. Okay, so let's kind of just jump right in here. Uh, we kind of got a lot to get to today, and I want you to uh, get back to actually running a company. Um, so why don't you, if you can, just give give everyone a little bit of an uh, idea about starting your, your, your first team when you were a REMAX agent back in 2011. So what – what was kind of the impetus to start that team? Like what made you say, okay, you know, I have too many leads I can handle enough is enough or, you know, was it something else? Yeah, honestly, it was exactly that. I, I kind of, the evolution from me going from individual to a team was only about a year and a half time frame, So it happened rather quickly. Uh, first year did about 10 transactions next year, 72. And that's when it just got like too cumbersome. Yeah. To continue to keep up with that daily grind. Um, so literally reached out someone in the office. I said, Hey man, I got a ton of leads. Do you want to jump on this and kind of become a part of it all? So at first that whole team concept was very much me learning as I went about it. Um, but then we slowly built in the procedures, the processes, what it took to be very efficient and the training and conversion and all those pieces behind it all. Um, but it initially started simply as I just had too many leads and I couldn't handle them all. Got it. Say, like I was blessed for when I started, you know, cause it was in 2011, a lead cost back then was 20, 25 bucks maybe to sure. get go upwards of maybe 200 bucks if you're looking at a specific property syndicated lead. So, you know, it's changed in terms of cost and all that type of stuff. But um, I was just building a general online lead gen, put it on to referral based business um, and was growing rather rapidly. So we went from one new agent to, you know, 15 agents on the team within another year period. Um, and it just was the same exact thing, online leads and then building it to referral base. Um, wow. It's kind of, it started quickly from individual to team. And then at that point, what happened is once you get to the point of building a team, agents become extremely successful um, and they decide to go off and do things on their own. Right. And I kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it was going to be the general evolution. Hey, every time I'm just training agents up and then they get to a point where they leave. Mm. And unlike a lot of, you know, teams that you see out there today, I just, I thought they were right. Right. I looked at it and said, <laughs> longer have a value prop for you. You you've kind of moved past that. So that's why I went out and started a brokerage is I got to see things happen in such a quick period of time with my growth from brand new green agent wondering how, what do I do to even get started to a top team seeing team members ready to go off and do it on their own in such a quick period of time that I wanted to start a brokerage that allowed to pretty much offer a package or something for every agent in the real estate industry, right? Yeah. When yeah. doing time, that's what we're going to do. So jumped off and did that. And it's still, uh, still in terms of a brokerage landscape, heavily built off the online lead gen and all that type stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, the, what you're saying there is pretty interesting because that's kind of like a, you know, the catch 22 of starting a team is that you're training all these great people and you have these fresh faces. Uh, and then, you know, once they get at a certain skill level, they want to kind of leave the nest, <laughs> uh, go off on their own. Um, so so I, I guess, you know, the transition kind of makes sense. Um, you know, going from your team and then, you know, you maybe have one or two admins to, to, to you know, making a full, full fledged uh, brokerage where you can offer more support and training and all that. Um, so let me ask you this. I think, you know, one, one of the things that a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're, you know, maybe they have too much business to handle. Maybe they have, they want to invest more money in online leads. They're thinking of starting a team. Uh, how did you handle 
uh, just attracting newer agents, you know, people who are maybe fresh from, from, from school or, you know, people who are struggling or people who just want to be buyer's agents. How did you attract agents to your team? Like, what was your uh, sh- strategy? I mean, you take them out to coffee or wh- wh- what were you looking for too? Yeah, at the time, to be honest, a lot of people were referring others to me, um, whether it was from people on my team or just other agents hearing what we were doing. Um, But it was more the value proposition that I provided. So a lot of people say leads, right? I'm going to provide leads or something along those lines. Um, I strongly believe in providing more leads than even an agent needs. And I'm okay with potentially missing a conversion or two along the way. Um, And also strongly believe in providing solid quality leads, right? So there's a big difference between sometimes a specific property based lead to a, you know, Facebook pay-per-click lead generated lead. Not that it's not a bad lead. They're just more longer term, right? Yeah, sure. First starts to get that whole cycle rolling. You're looking at, you know, I don't want to make that a year process on a team. I'd rather make it a three, four months. And now you're booming, you're being consistent in your business and you're seeing closings on again, that consistent basis. So it was more, the quality of the leads, it was also the success of the agents that were already on my team, right? Easily being able to say, hey, look at this agent and see what they've been able to do in such a right. short period of time. Um, then it just became very systematized. So as they were coming on to the team and joining, we had those procedures in place where in the first week or two, they weren't feeling lost, right? Like I'm on this team, yeah. all these great things. I haven't even been set up on a lead system yet or something along those lines. Um, so it was more just very – very good processes and set up um, leads that were quality. And then also like hopefully a true belief in them seeing as I go about this, I was smart enough as a team leader to take myself out of business pretty much. And I said, look, I don't need to, I'm going to worry about building you up and making you successful and do that. Then it's going to be a win-win for both parties. And a lot of time with team leaders in a sense, what you see is they can't, for some reason they can't take themselves out of that production, right? Or at least to a level where they're still going to be able to have the ability to train that agent and help that agent really be successful. Um, and I was just smart enough to realize, let me put them ahead of myself. And if I can do yeah. that, the success will come for everybody. So in a sense, you're, you were kind of thinking as a managing broker from the get go, whereas you understood that, you know, people need to be able to kind of spread their wings, so to speak. Uh, and that sort of, you know, inserting yourself into the situation is not always a helpful thing. Um, yeah. So, so on, on, on that note, uh, what just to, just to sort of, I, I know, and again, the sort of difficulty is, is coming from, you know, it's, it's one thing to be, you know, you're at a Remax, right? So uh, it's one thing, you know, to have a team that's sort of successful and has a reputation and, and people are, are trying to, uh, wanting to join it. Um, but what's, uh, you know, because I know not everyone's a good hire, you know, uh, a lot of times a newer agent is not in the industry that they want to be in or, you know, they're a little disillusioned. Uh, what, what is like, you know, if you just super quick, like what's what's something you looked for? Uh, you know, Barbara Corcoran famously said that she looked for uh, uh, resilience, you know, people that can kind of bounce back quickly from, um, you know, from setbacks. Um, and she didn't care about anything else. She's like, look, you, you're articulate, you're personable you can bounce back quickly. I'm going to hire, I don't care if you're a janitor uh, or any experience you have. So what's, what's something that you, you know, you looked for in agents early on that, that you've kind of stuck with or changed maybe. Yeah, yeah. In terms of just general qualifications, the first and foremost for us was full time, right? So you need to be a full time real estate agent, dual career just isn't going to work with your, you know, just time. It's very tough yeah. one foot in one foot out, all that type stuff. Um, this is kind of an obvious reason. So, even though it, it sounds a little bit harsher, but like financial ability, because I know without a doubt, it's going to take you a couple months to get going. And the only time I really see people fail is if they don't have that ability to give it a couple months to really get things rolling. Um, kind of just, you know, get in, diving into details of, hey, what got you into this? Why? And, you know, do you understand it might be a couple months before things really get growing, going? So kind of really knowing that. And then for me, it's just showing up. I mean, we have we have those general requirements of, hey, here's a team meeting or here's the potential accountability measures that are going to be um, put on to you and just making sure you're hitting those. Um, right. Sometimes teams take that to like a 10th degree where it is actually a little bit too much. You got to realize and understand they're independent contractor. Uh, but at the same time, if you set general accountability and if they hit those and show up and just do the simplest of things such as respond to a lead in two minutes or whatever it is, as long as you're yeah. doing 
we ask you to do, it's going to make you successful. And then obviously it's going to keep you um, a part of the team and, and grow and all that type of stuff. So just general hard work, you know, at the end yeah. of the day, it's, it's proven pretty quickly in terms of when someone comes. I, I think, you know, the thing there that, that that's important is that, you know, you guys had a system you had, you know, whereas someone just kind of being thrown into the, you know, the, the fire of a brokerage, you know, straight fresh from school doesn't necessarily have a system down. They don't have, you know, I'm sure you're coming in, you're giving them lead nurturing emails. You're saying, Hey, look, you know, you got to call this, you should say this. It's, it's, and then at that point, you know, it almost, you know, like you said, it almost kind of, uh, not that it's foolproof, <laughs> uh, as, as we both know, but, you know, it kind of becomes almost a numbers game where it's like, look, these people, people are buying houses, people are selling houses, they're going to do it through someone. Um, so if you're in the right place at the right time, even if you're, you know, unless you're, you know, like have an actively repellent personality and you're a yeah. horrible person, you know, you're going to, you're going to get deals done. It's just, it's just simple math, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's an awesome point, man, because so how we run it is an agent of the day model, right? So you have, you have ISA, we run the agent of the day. So everybody gets one day a week um, and they show up at 930. There's a 30 minute team meeting with coaches and things like that to keep them on track in terms of what they're doing and what other, you know, ways of conversion may help. Then from 10 to five, they're in office and why their leads go from 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. the next day for a 24 hour period, they are getting leads um, wow. during that 20 hour for our period, they're getting you know ten to twelve leads. They're probably getting about forty-five a month, and it, with just general conversion, we're asking to get those agents to about one and a half, two deals a month off what we provide them, and hopefully yeah. other stuff. It's literally like a three and a half percent conversion, right? That's what, amazing. Yeah, this industry, you know, average, especially if you put everything on top of it. So, well, that's for an experienced agent too. You're talking about brand new people, you know, and they have their sphere, and you know, what's the, you know cold calling your, your aunts, you know, <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> when you're first starting out, you know, your 3% conversion rate is incredible. So, um, yeah, that's, that's great. Right. Right. So, um, but yeah. Awesome. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, we're trying to getting into the kind of meat of the uh, conversation here. Um, so let me ask you how, as far as online leads go, I mean, you seem, you know, pretty, pretty bullish on online leads. And I know a lot of people, I mean, not that they're the only lead source, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. what, um, how did you sort of take, uh, you know, a, a level of, of, say you're getting, you know, I don't know, a hundred leads a month just to have a nice round number. You, you have a team, the team is happy, you know, they're, they're, they're working their leads, they're closing, you know, 12 deals a year or something. And how did you, what was your, how did, how did you step that up to the next level for lead generation specifically? Was it something where we're like, okay, you know, I'm getting, um, you know, hundred leads a month. I want to hire more people. I'm going to put, invest more cash into, you know, Facebook ads or, you know, how, how did that, how did that happen? Yeah. And it's pretty much that we do it based on number of leads a month per agent we think is going to help them be successful. Um, that number is probably 30 is realistically what it should be. We do more around 40. Um, so we try to just kind of over, uh, over deliver in terms of to agents and things that we do. But ours is just a matter of when we add an agent, we add 40 more leads of about the same quality. So that way the agents can take those and we know it's going to lead to success as long as what they should do. So ours is a, um, in a sense, a pay to play game, you know, at the sure. end we do, um, obviously there's easier ways to get leads and things along those lines, but we'd like to keep at least half again, specific property base, which is the Zillow's, the realtor.com's, the homes.com's like plenty of those, um, which obviously has a higher level of conversion. And then about half from the pay-per-click, the Facebook, whatever else we can do to go out there and generate lead sources. Um, and then right now we generate six, seven, 7,000 leads a month. So it's just at a point as we just continue to grow and scale that. Um, and as we see the agents become successful, obviously the model, it, it works out very well for us. So um, it, it's mostly pay to play and we go out there and we contract and work with these, um, you know, syndicated sites and things like that. Sure. That makes sense. Uh, so, so speaking of, uh, you know, let's, let's kind of talk about the, you know, the, the, the elephant in the room, which is, which is Zillow. Uh, you know, a lot of agents love to hate Zillow. Um, you know, uh, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where, I mean, I don't think you can really honestly advertise in real estate with that unless you have your own website and, you know, you've been in business since 1994. Um, 
and you're, you know, you're coming up and search rankings over a company that has billions of dollars. Anyway, um, uh, what is your, uh, like, have you, have you tried any, I know that Zillow has one thing that I, that I, that I thought that, um, that Zillow has that's, that's pretty useful is they have the sort of team functions and they're offering you sort of, you know, concierge programs and anything. Do you think there, is there any value in those programs? Is, is it something, um, or like premier agent direct with Facebook advertising? And it kind of seems like, you know, having a listing up, uh, you know, claiming it, doing your premier agent thing, and then, you know, advertising on some other listings to get some leads seems like it's a pretty good way to fill a pipeline. Um, and then all these other programs that they're coming up with, like Facebook advertising, uh, you know, and then some of the weird ones and they have, you know, lead uh, concierges and all this stuff. Um, have you, just out of curiosity, do you find any, any, any value from those new programs? Have they offered it to you? Have you tried them? Uh, just... Yeah, we uh, to be honest with you, we have more faith in our agent at the end of the day. And the only reason for that is it gives us the oversight of it. Um, unfortunately, with the concierge service and all that, I don't get to see. And if there's a kink, it's tougher to kind of get in there and correct it to make sure it works. Um, so we do not use them, nor ha have we had enough experience to say, hey, would that increase conversion or anything along those lines? But when I say that, like, People do need to understand, I've had multiple talks with Zillow and kind of seen it. They are truly about the consumer, right? That's what they care about. The reason they have the concierge service is because there's really not a pay for it in terms of things. Like it's, it's not like it's just an added function that they do. They yeah. just are extremely tired of real estate agents not following up with people on their site asking questions. <laughs> yeah. so actually, it's generally what's best for the consumer in terms of the Real estate agent, obviously, it's a one touch, and I want it to come to us because we can put it on our campaigns and our just general follow up scripts. What's allowed to make it better? With that all being said, the team function again is a consumer based thing because it allows potentially a couple more reviews on that team and things along those lines that so people can see what is this agent all about, what is this agent yeah. team all about, etc. Um, now that helps tremendously in terms of being able to add people, boost reviews, get higher rankings, and things like that on to Zillow. Um, but I do not use the back end in terms of the lead routing, which you can set up, you know, right. um, you know call based systems with uh, where, you know, broadcast out to multiple agents at one time with the phone call um, or ways to route leads based on zip code or whatever per team member and things along those lines. So we don't actually use the function. Um, I think they are probably great tools for teams. If you look at it and say, hey, I can get on Zillow and get all that for free. And I personally wouldn't have to go out and pay for a boomtown that costs an additional fifteen hundred dollars a month. Um, so you're giving a lot of products to a real estate agent that potentially is kind of growing and don't have the ability to add a bunch of spend to other CRMs and sources and all that. Um, however, once you get to that next level, you know, your own CRM and own in-house stuff is going to be needed just for the yeah. follow-up and accountability. Um, but it's all good stuff. One thing Zilla does that's obviously great is the coming soon marketing and things like that. We're in a, we're in a business where, unfortunately with IDX searches and everything out there, like clients can go out there and buyers, they can find homes before almost the real estate agent can sometimes. Or sometimes <laughs> the agent is like, just not, you know, I'll wait till you tell me about something, but having functions like that where you can go out and market prior to, or, you know, find a property for a client and I can go and say, look what I found for you that you didn't find a, a bunch of different avenues. I think, I think everything that they're, they're doing is the approach for the consumer why it may piss some agents off every now and then at the end of the day, I don't see how it almost negatively impacts anybody that doesn't want to pay to get leads, you know? Or right. Right. Advantage um, of, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. Uh, and, and also, you know, and then I think, you know, it just, just even just simply saying, you know, look, you know, uh, you know, agents, you know, this isn't, the site isn't for you necessarily, first of all, you yeah, know, first right, foremost, right. again, it's, 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 it's for people who want a good experience and want to, you know, find stuff quickly and curate lists and get, you know, advice on, on lighting fixtures and, you know, and all that good stuff. And I think, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head there and that they do that really, really well, yeah. um, you know, compared to maybe say, I don't want to name other names of other large competitor sites, but uh, yeah. Um, so I, I think that's a, a good segue into, um, uh, so, so I guess just lead distribution, you know, so just super quickly, you know, lead, lead, leads come in from Zillow. I mean, you've, I'm sure you've got a bunch of listings up, you, you, you know, you've got a lot of money invested in ads. Uh, how did you, I mean, and then I can see where, you know, you have 15 agents, it's just, you just kind of yell them out and whoever had theirs happens to pick them up. <laughs> right. um, but, uh, 
so you, you kind of mentioned that you have like the, you know, it's like the one day a month where each person has their own sort of lead, uh, you know, bonanza. Uh, but um, how do you, how do you sort of take, and, and then if it's a little beyond the scope of this, you know, call, we can, you know, obviously it's not a big deal, but how do you take, uh, you know, when you have 700 agents or you have 300, even 50 or 60 agents and you're getting hundreds of leads a month, how do you, is there, do you have a person that sort of distributes those leads or is it on round robin? Is it automatic? How, how does that work? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, we actually, we actually run every model out there, to be honest with you. Now you do have to look at and say, okay, our real estate brokerage, we have about 150 people that are on some type of lead system. The other ones sometimes are individual agents or team themselves or whatever, because we're, we're kind of, we have 14 packages, only two involve getting leads, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, but we do it in three different ways. Um, number one is just like a general shark tank model where it kind of rings a bunch of people at one time, whoever answers first, which is going to lead to the speed to lead measures, which is super important. Um, so that one just kind of really, they go there and agents, whoever can call the quickest gets it um, or click the quickest. Everything runs through Boomtown, by the way, is what we're using. Oh, great. It's just called the Shark Tank function. Um, we have an ISA model where we have a bunch of leads that go to a, an inside sales rep and that person converts and sets true appointments for real estate agents. Um, those are kind of for agents that are kind of graduating onto that next scale. We're not going to guarantee you how many, but it's nice to get an appointment every now and then. You have someone truly on call making sure those happen. Um, the inside sales model, which is absolutely amazing. What we found when we built out an extremely large call center is that those people typically want to become real estate agents. So it's tough to <laughs> remain. Yeah, yeah. We found a, you know, a person that just truly loves to do that and it helps us on a, a certain level. Um, and then we do that age in the day and how we do it is it's, it's actually those agents have one day a week, um, oh, okay. about 10 agents and they go on on that Monday or whatever. They're set up their boom town for lead distribution on a round robin between those 10 people for that day. Got it, got so it. Every lead is filtering in from every source that we do. And those agents are taking those and kind of working them appropriately and making sure. And then again, they have to be in office. Um, afterwards, they have an accountability form, how many leads they get, how many leads they convert, what else do they do that day, all that type stuff. So a ton of measures in place. But we do it um, from an agent of the day, round robin type, from an ISA type to a shark tank where everybody's getting broadcasted live at one time. We try them all and kind of always measuring which one is actually working the best for our brokerage, our teams, our agents, um, right. and so forth. And then, so uh, you mentioned you mentioned Boomtown. Is is your website through Boomtown as well, or is that something that could scale to a to a brokerage size uh, uh, company at this point, or is, or did you have they to do? Side? They do give that functionality. What's crazy again is we we pretty much use everything. So. Pearson Smith Realty just has a general WordPress site that we set up and it's kind of more just a branding play for us. Um, agents with us that are on lead generation, we funneled all through Boomtown. I think Boomtown is an excellent product, excellent people, great service. Um, we've been using them for a long time. So we have everything with leads going through there because it's what we're comfortable with in terms sure. of, you know, the conversion piece to it all. And actually the majority of other agents in our brokerage, we provide them with the Commissions Inc. platform. Um, so that way they kind of ah. get the CRM and website as well. Yeah. It keeps our leads and their leads separate. So that way it's right, right. colliding okay. with one another and kind of seeing, you know, where they're at with things. So um, Boomtown, I'm far more um, efficient in, in terms of what we do because I've been using it so long. Um, but Boomtown does provide a platform where you could make that a brokerage wide website by setting up different systems per each um, office that you run or state that you're in or whatever it is. Um, and in my conversations with Commissions Inc., they can do, you know, the same stuff if we were to go to that level on that side of things. But um, both wonderful platforms, both great. I've pretty much tried majority of them out there. So, um, you know, super happy with those guys that kind of helps us function with everything we do from the brokerage. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Um, so what, what about, um, what about training? So I know, uh, you know, you, you know, I, even as, as a brokerage and, and you guys are right outside of DC, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to get new people and you're going to get people, you know, maybe experienced people, you know, making the jump. Um, but just, just for, let's just for, for a second, focus on kind of the newbies that are coming, coming out, uh, who may have sales experience, they may have no experience at all that, you know, uh, they may be super promising. Um, so how, uh, how does, you know, you don't have to go into super crazy detail if, if, uh, if you want, but how is, how is training at Pearson Smith? Like what, uh, you know, compared to say like a Remax or, or Keller Williams, 
Um, how, how do you guys, what's your kind of approach to training and uh, what's, um, uh, you know, w w when you're training people is, uh, I'm sorry, do you guys, uh, do you kind of standardize things like, you know, lead nurturing and you have drip emails or, or is that something that you sort of encourage people to, to personal make their own, you know, is, right. is uh, I'm sorry, that's a kind of combined two questions there. So you know, whatever, no, whatever you want to take. From a general training perspective, so our brokerage is made up of uh, 13 packages, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you go on leads, which is two packages, what I can guarantee, we assign personal coaches to you and all that type stuff. If I'm going to be giving you leads and spending that much money on it, I'm going to give you so much oversight and help yeah. and yeah. Hand -hold you need to make you as successful as possible. So you can almost – why the training will always be there, which I'll get into, like you can almost throw it out the window because you have someone just one-on-one -on -one mentoring you, helping you at all times. Um, we have two packages that are basically for new agents or dual career agents or something along those lines, which I'll kind of tell you how we hit those as well. And then everybody else has to do a minimum volume of two and a half million and above. So a lot of people are coming in already experienced. Um, so they're looking for the more high level training that we kind of hit at all times. Um, but for those brand new agents, um, how we do it is we do obviously the hold about five to six uh, in-class trainings a, a week. Um, within that, each one is live streamed and then re-recorded or recorded and put into a video library so we can kind of show them. They can get that at all times later on. Um, we hold one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if you ever want to coordinate with a broker, you just click a link and you can schedule one-on-one -on -one in their calendar. Um, we have mentorship programs that we don't force the agent through, but they can pick optionally if they want to. Um, they're a little bit more creative in terms of, hey, if you want to work with this agent, here's their profile, and they ask for a bottle of bourbon if they close a the deal or something. Just a little bit more that would happen if the agent wanted to yeah. in there and do it. Um, and then weekly, we do accountability coaching, um, virtual podcast base for each and every agent that kind of hits into the you know lead generation higher level topics you know things along those lines that kind of help them grow and maintain so we, we've actually tried to take every possible way to help train and guide an agent and provide it to them at all times now it is a business where you're 1099 independent contractor you know it's all there for you, you got to come get it and do that uh, if you're on leads it's it's you know kind of we're going to really push to make that happen. but everybody else it's hey We'll support you at all time. It's an open door policy. Here's everything set up for you. Now take advantage of it and let's kind of really make this as successful as you want it to be. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds great. Um, so, and then, you know, another thing you kind of touched on there uh, with training is, is, is how do you, and again, you know, in 2018 here, you know, online leads are really, I mean, you know, a lot of people, hey, I'm going to do door knocking, do cold calling, and, and that's great, but you know, I think the latest NAR statistic was something like, you know, 90% of people are searching online for houses who wouldn't. Um, so, so I had, when you have newer agents or even, you know, people that are coming from maybe a more traditional brokerage and they, Hey, look, you know, I, I want, you know, I want to work for someplace that's doing something a little different, a little more innovative. Um, do you, do you sort of offer, and again, you know, I guess maybe you have the different plans, but do you offer agents or do you tell your agents that, Hey, look, you know, cold calling is dead. <laughs> you know, you're only, we're, we're, all, we're an online shop. Don't, don't even, don't even bother. Or, or is it something more where like you kind of encourage people to maybe combine old school tactics with, with online or, or uh... yeah. so what we typically tell people is, Hey, look, focus on three to four things that you are comfortable with that you want to be consistent with moving forward. Right. And one of those has to be referral based business. After that, here's the millions of ways to do it, right? You can hold open houses, you can buy online leads, you can call expired drawings, you can door knock, you can do all these type things. Um, just general networking or, uh, again, a million ways to do it, but you got to pick and you got to remain consistent and build an actual game plan around it. Um, what I have typically seen, and this is just me and, and kind of really interacting with agents and seeing a ton, no matter what they do or what they say, it's majority online or referral based. Yeah. They can call expires literally every day, all day long. And hey, if that's what you want to do and what you're comfortable with, and it's going to, and you're willing to put in hours and hours of that prospecting time, go for it. No one's saying that it's wrong or anything to do. But even the agents that do that all day long, when I look at their business, it makes up such a small percentage of it and takes up so much of their time. Yeah. Um, so 
I, in terms of the ways to do it, we can teach and train on everything on where to go. Like, Hey, you want to call expired withdrawals, jump on a Vulcan seven or a red X or whatever, you know, here's where you get the numbers and here's what you got to do. And here's the scripting that's going to make it make sense. But if you look at it and you're really not even comfortable on the phone or, um, you know, here's what this may lead to, you determine if that's what's right for you. Um, and then be consistent on it if it is. So we, we teach and train on everything, but what I have personally seen is online leads, take online leads, get amazing at converting them and referral based, right? And do that the right way. The problem of a lot of agents is they get online leads and it's turn and burn, right? That's why 87 and don't use that agent again because they forget about them. You've got to fig or the other aspect is referral based businesses think online leads suck because they don't call them for two days, right? And then they're like, that person had another agent already. And it's like, you got the lead on Wednesday. It's now Friday. If you can just couple the two together, online leads, convert, make them your best friend. Now there's a loyalty and there's a trust and they know you're going to take care of them, build that referral based business. It's what I've seen to be the best way to really, really grow a real estate career. Awesome. Well, one last question that, that's something I like to, uh, to ask everybody who is, is, you know, successful and doing great. Uh, and, and again, for sort of newer agents out there, newer teams, newer, newer associate brokers are trying to like, you know, dip their toe and like, ah, oh, should I invest my, you know, in my, my, uh, my savings or, you know, what should I do? Um, what, uh, what, you know, and again, you know, but back to, back to Barbara Bergman, but, uh, you know, she has a great story and that, you know, she, she, she made a ton of mistakes and, and, uh, you know, she was a waitress and then she invested money in, in with a, uh, a consultant who just happened to have an amazing idea, which came up with the Corcoran report, which, you know, um, is there, what, what kind of like, if you today, you Eric today could go back a couple of years and find Eric who was like, you know, just starting out trying to say, Hey, I'm going to do this and make this into a big thing. What advice would you give? Like what, what kind of mistakes would you say that you might've been making? Whereas today you're like, Oh man, like, you know, I can't believe I was doing that. I, you know, this is the one thing. Like well, what's something that, you know, people should, should look out for maybe, you know, when, when, when starting a team or, or trying to take team to the next level. Or, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, uh, this wasn't necessarily something that I did, but something I see so many people do, um, is obviously the give up too early piece. And what I mean by that is we're talking about leads specific today with the Zillow and, you know, things like that. Like I make Zillow realtor, like I make those leads work on a 50, 50 split. Right. And if you're doing it as an individual agent, your split is 80, 20, 90, 10, hundred percent, whatever it is, like you should a hundred percent kill in terms of what that ROI is going to bring to you. Like it's a no brainer. I don't care any of the changes or whatever happens. If you can convert that lead, you'll make a ton of money. Um, what they do wrong is they give up after three, four, five months, right before it hits into a funnel where you're actually going to start seeing the ROI. So what they have to understand is when you get into that online lead business, it is expensive and it's going to be expensive for about four to six months. And then you got the funnel going, right? You're moving these people right. along from, you know, active, I just converted you to now you're a hot buyer. To now you're pending to now you're under contract or now you're uh, at settlement, like, and that's when the flow, once it gets there, it's there forever. As long as you just don't stop. These people get to four months and say, man, I've spent eight grand. I haven't closed a deal. Like this stuff doesn't work. And then they quit it right away and don't realize they were probably two months from like crushing an online based business. Um, now, can everybody do that? Definitely not. Not everybody has eight grand, 10 grand, 12 grand, whatever it is that you need to really be successful and get that going. But if you do and you are willing to call quickly and do all those things, guaranteed, I've never seen it not work as long as people do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I, I, and, my, and I've seen that a lot in, uh, in New York City as well, especially in Brooklyn, which is, uh, you know, uh, has, has been growing and gentrifying and sort of up and coming, so many new up and coming neighborhoods, it's hard to keep track. Uh, but, you know, little small agents or agencies that no one's ever heard of and then, you know, I turn around and then five minutes later they have, you know, they're this giant company with, you know, tons of exclusives and, and, and a few hundred agents. And it's really amazing. But, you know, again, it's sort of, I guess it's, it's what we, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier. It's like, you know, talent is there. And like, you know, that's something that like, um, you know, is super important, but like, again, it's, you know, it's maybe it's, it's part of it is just getting people to say, look, you know, this is not rocket science. Everyone, if everyone works hard and everyone sort of, you know, it's a numbers game, really, at the end of the day, you know, and yeah. if you're doing it smart, you're doing it right, and granted, you know, obviously, there's a ton of competition, and, and you're not the only game in town, uh, and, and that's where I'm assuming something like, you know, you guys, have, I saw, you know, the pictures from your office, it looks like, 
you know, like a Facebook startup or, you know, somebody who looks like you're making apps rather than selling homes, which <laughs> right. you know, I think that's something where a lot of agents are, uh, you know, more attracted to rather than the sort of fusty, you know, you know, linoleum floor, you know, fluorescent light of, of your, of your typical, uh, real estate office. So I think branding, you know, is, is, is a huge, is a huge thing here, which I think you guys do amazingly well. Um, Sweet. So yeah. So what about, uh, I mean, anything else you want to add in like some of the, you know, like perks you give agents or anything or, you know, uh, yeah. favorite yeah, band, but, um, I mean, you know, whatever. So ours is, uh, the, the value propositions. One is just culture. I mean, it's a, it's a show. It is kind of that Google feel that Zappos feel. We're trying to do something where, Hey, it's about being you. It's super, super agent focused and supportive. Um, there are 17 or, uh, 13 comp packages. Some are around getting 40 leads a month. Some are around getting a hundred percent splits. Some are around, you know, in between that and others team building. There's no cost per agent. You can grow, you can do whatever you want. So that's easy. Um, we have kind of that passive income revenue sharing streams. We, we literally tried to build the perfect brokerage for real estate agents. Um, Cause we're very understanding of the fact that, Hey, everybody's ultimate goal. And if it's not, you shouldn't even be in the business, but everybody's ultimate goal is the client, right? We have to take care of that consumer, but brokers need to realize how I take care of that consumer is providing to my real estate agents who are going to have the day-to-day -day interaction with that client. And we've just really figured that out. We're, we're going to do everything we can to help the agents be successful. And if they are, the client's happy, they're happy, we're happy, and we're growing our brokerage um, that was vision day one and it's vision today. And we're just not taking our eye off that ball of, of creating that workplace. That's perfect for real estate agents. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way to do it. <laughs> uh, you know, and then, like I said, you DC and your are a little uh, pretty similar in some senses in that, you know, you got the old money sort of bigger companies that are, that are kind of dinosaurs or, you know, the sort of battleships that are trying to turn into dime. And we have these sort of leaner, smarter newer companies like yours that are, that are that are just killing it because you know they're giving people what they want uh, at right. the end of the day and, and it's not they're not sort of you know uh sort of set in their ways and and stuck you know doing things the way they did them just because that's the way they always did um so hey eric this is this has been great um what's how do people get in touch with um uh with uh pearson smith pearson smith.com or pearson smith realty yeah, PearsonSmithRealty.com. Obviously, you can always email me, Eric, at E4Realty.com. That's E, the number four, Realty.com. Or just call our office, 571-386-1075. Uh, and I truly mean this with anybody that's kind of watching or anything like that. I have a ton of people reach out. I do believe in the abundance mindset. So if you ever need something or want, you know, a resource or to share, just happy to reach out for sure. Awesome. Hey, man, it was really great talking to you. And uh, looking forward to hearing great things from you guys in 2018. Hi, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.